Oh, my fucking thing fell and it fucking stopped. But anyways, so... Why is my fucking car so wet? Um, so anyways, fucking... It was like, uh... I saw Kim and I was like, oh, fuck, hey, what's up, dude? She was like, hi, Crystal. I was like, hey. And then she was just, like, standing by herself. And I was with all the boys, right? Because I'm always with the boys. Um, and I was with all the boys. And she was kind of, like, looking around. And I'm like, hey, do you want to come sit with us? She's like, yeah, that'd be great. And I'm like, come on down, dude. Um... And so she sat next to me. I sat next to Felipe, I think. And I just fucking cried in his shoulders, dude. Just fucking cried. Um, and it was really fucking sad. It was a really fucking sad event. Like, why? Because Marcos was a hella solid dude, right? Like, he... So, okay. So Marcos had always been a big fat dude, right? Like, obese big ass motherfucker his whole life um then he got like the sleeve surgery then right um then he lost a lot of weight then he started working out he was like hella ripped and shit like that um and that's when we were hooking up he was fucking swole at the time and um and then we started going to the gym together and then or actually we started going to the gym together and it wasn't until like one malt liquor monday <laughs> i had like one too many mickeys and I just like went over to him and like sat on his lap and fucking gave him a kiss and that was it um, and then it became like more of a like more common thing but like I don't know I, w I still had my guard up right because I was still like I literally had just gotten out of a fucking out of a relationship with fucking my ex and like I wasn't ready to just like jump into another one I wanted to keep my options open <laughs> um so that happened. That happened. Kept my options open, broke his heart, fucking died. So I want to go say my goodbye to him, or I want to go say hi to him. Um, cause one fucking, one fucking dream that I had was him, was for his mom, uh, was him. And he came up to me and he was like, hey, I want you, I'm going to cry. <laughs> He's like, hey, I want you to give this to my mom. And it was like a rose quartz crystal. And he was just like, tell her I love her. And uh, I was like, okay, I could do that for you. And I still haven't done it to this day. And then he stopped visiting me. So um, I actually have a rose quartz bracelet at my house. <coughs> I think I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to have to find it and stop by Ruth's house. And give it to her. And then maybe Marcos will visit me again. Um, so that's my story of my friend Marcos. Oh, also he was my neighbor <laughs> from 5th grade to ninth grade. And it's funny because one year for Cyberfest, I had one ticket. I think it was my freshman year. I had one ticket to Cyberfest and... Um, the weekend before Cyberfest, my mom went out of town. I ended up getting my tongue pierced and spending a whole bunch of her money. <laughs> and then, um, and then she like was like, "You can't go to Cyberfest, sorry." And I was like, "The fuck, I can't!" And so I hit up my fucking stepbrother. I was like, "Hey, I got a fucking extra ticket to Cyberfest. If you want to go, give me a ride, pick me up. I'm gonna be, um, I'm gonna be around the corner from my fucking house in this house that has a fort in it." <laughs> And he's like, what? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, when you come down the street, I'm like, have your music up loud. I'll be able to hear you. Once you hit my corner, once you hit like the corner and make a right, I'm like, I'll be right there. And so he was like, all right. And so fucking, I literally fucking walked to Marcos and <laughs> Marcos and BJ's house and fucking like was about to go like creep behind their fucking fort. And I think Marcos saw me. He's like, what are you doing? I was like, I was just going to hide behind your fort here. And he was just like, for what? And I'm like, I'm, I'm waiting to get picked up. And he was like, oh, okay. He's like, don't let my mom see you. <laughs> it's like, for sure. <laughs> I could do that. And then I remember when I was fucking like back in the day, cause DJ was my neighbor too. Like all the, like all my kids from the neighborhood would go to his house, right? And go in their hot tub and fucking uh, Weasel and fucking Jeff were like, yeah, come over, come with us. And I got there and fucking BJ's like, yeah, I know my mom doesn't like girls at the house. Sorry, can't come inside. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> And that, that was it. It was funny. It was funny. Um, so, that was the thing. And, um, 
He's just been a part of my life for forever. <coughs> I do remember that, though. And then when I was dating Craig, we went to his 21st birthday. <coughs> And I stopped right here over at Niles Liquor and got him, like, a bottle of E&J because that's all that I could afford. <laughs> and then uh, went to his house and he's like, fuck, I know what I'm going to do with this. And I'm like, yeah, have a shot. And he didn't. He's like, ugh. It's like, there you go, Marcos. That was the thing. I'm going to get gas. I'll be right back, you guys. Okay. So gas has been put in. We only spent $61.50 today, folks. That is it. I'm just empty out my ashtray while I'm here too. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. That is much better. Oh, I should have fucking checked the fucking weather before I got a fucking car wash. Hmm. Do I get a car wash right now, you guys? Or do I fucking wait? Because it could 110% potentially fucking rain. Oh, why is my life like this? Also, I love you, my beautiful wife to be. I love when he leaves little notes for me. Okay, anyways. All right, here we go. I think I'm just gonna get the car wash today, you guys, because my car is looking a little dirty on the outside, but realistically if it's gonna fucking rain then what does it matter Ugh. okay here we go oh. where am i going i'm just gonna go yeah i see you buddy here we go uh, 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 uh. Ah. I have to go to fucking Sally's for my fucking mom. Right now. So we'll do that first and then we'll go to the cemetery. Because as of right now, it's going to be noon in like 40 minutes. The sun is going to be directly above me. I didn't bring any sunscreen. So that is the thing. <sighs> okay, so friend number one in Chapel of the Chimes, that was Marcos. Really miss him. He's been gone for. Since Killian was like two, I think. Oh, that stupid fuck. You want to hear how much of a fucking asshole my fucking ex is? Let me tell you. He knew about Marcos and I. <clears throat> um, and so when Marcos died, like I was at the funeral service and it was like after, uh, it was after the service, it was a reception. They had it over at Corey Lakes. My ex is blowing me up, dude. And I'm like, what's up? And he's like, the baby won't stop fucking crying. He fucking needs you. Blah, blah, blah. And this is Killian. And I'm like, what's wrong with him? You take care of him fucking five days a week. Why, why suddenly you can't handle it? Like, what is the fucking issue? Um, and so fucking... He was like, are you going to fucking come home and take care of your fucking kid or some fucking shit? And I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm on my fucking way. So I was pissed, right? I was so fucking mad that I had to leave. And I remember Craig being like, where are you going? And I'm like, I have to go to death with you here, my fucking kid. And he was like, oh. He's like, hmm, okay. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Because we didn't, I didn't do, like, the lighting ceremony thing. Like, I was pissed. And then I fucking get home and, like, my ex is passed out with the kid in bed. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Like, seriously, like, what a fucking asshole. Like, because I remember calling him on the way, just blowing him up, and he wasn't answering me. And he does that, where he'll get fucking upset, right? And he just won't, oh, and he just won't take your fucking phone call. Sorry, I saw a huge pot while I wanted to avoid that. So I was like, I was just fucking mad. And, like, I didn't even want to go back because I had just paid for parking. Like, it was just like, I'm here. You're fucking sleeping. What the fuck do you need me for? Oh, man, it still upsets me. That's how fucking much it was. And it's just like, he, like, he doesn't have any fucking friends. He doesn't fucking care. <laughs> um, and like, I don't know, it was just whack. <sighs> so that was fucking Marcos. And then when he died, I haven't visited him and I just feel super bad about it. And then, um, and then what? And then... Josh. Josh is also at Chapel of the Chimes. <coughs> he was my friend who got into the shootout with the police. <coughs> and like literally one of the last conversations I had with him was like, hey, can you read my cards? <coughs> and I didn't. 
And I was like, maybe if you're lucky. And he's all, please, friend. And I was like, oh, did you get a chance to do it? Um, and Josh was just like, Josh has been in my life since I fucking moved to Union City. Back when I was in third grade. So, we had been friends for a super, super, super duper long time. And then what else? And then Chris Real. Chris motherfucking Real. He is, um, he is not a chapel who chimes. He has a big, nice, massive plot fucking over at the other cemetery on mission. And it's funny because, um, I don't know if I, I think I told you guys a long time ago. Um, when Chris died, I had broken up with Raymond probably like two weeks before, just as I was like, dude, I can't do this anymore. I'm fucking sad. I'm depressed. I hate being away from you. Like, this is so hard for me. <laughs> um, and then uh, when I went to Chris's funeral, I remember asking my ex if I could like sit next to him and he was like, no. And I'm like, fuck you. Fucking square. I was like, maybe that was our moment, right? Like to rekindle things and realize that life was fucking short and we have kids and maybe we could do things together and all these things. But Chris had something else in mind. Chris, Dyer was his true self. <laughs> true to himself, fucking 1000%. Um, with his like arms folded and crossed in the back of the corner, like, no, you can't stand next to me. Like, oh, well, fuck you. How about that? Went and fucking uh, sat next to my fucking friend Campa. I was actually sitting next to my fucking friend Zach and Rudy at first. And then I fucking saw Campa walk in. He went to go sit by himself. And I'm like, I'm going to go sit next to Campa. Because I asked fucking Rudy if I can cry on his shoulder. And he's like, no, what the fuck? And I'm like, fuck you. I'm like, rude, we're at a fucking funeral. That's just what happens. Um, and so, yeah, because he was like, if I fucking cry here, like, I'm going to lose my shit. He's like, sorry, I just have to not. And I'm like, that's fine. Because Chris Real would make grown men cry. And he did. Because he was that incredible. Because he had that much of an impact on people's lives. Because people fucking loved him and his fucking energy and his fucking vibe all day, every day, dude. Like, ooh. Like, it was fucking... He's just one in a million. And it's dope because you know how many times I say that about my friends when they die? <laughs> it's not like, oh, you know, like, he was just a great guy and, you know, everyone loved him. It's like, no, he was a one in a million type of person and I am so fucking lucky to know those people and to have called them my friends in my lifetime. Seriously. Like, because you don't meet once in a once in a million or one in a million people you don't meet once in a lifetime people you know what I mean like and I've had a few of them in my life and I am lucky to be that person in other people's lives you know what I'm saying like it's dope it is a dope ass thing um because life is short ladies and gentlemen and you really have to surround yourself with people who are going to be uplifting empower you give you confidence all of these things and I remember fucking Chris like back in the day he'd be like you're beautiful leave Dyer come be with me all of these things like and even though like even though he said it in a joking way like if I would have been like Chris I love you and I'm in love with you like let's be together like that would 100% have been a thing but I feel like that was like that he was like that with everyone because Chris flirted with anything that had a vagina <laughs> um but his girlfriend, his girlfriend was really dope, actually. Like, I, I really liked her. Um, I was really, like, she wasn't just with him for his extracurricular activities, you know what I'm saying? Like, she was with him because she cared about him, because she loved him. So I'm thankful that he had a person like that in his life, because he deserved it. He really, truly fucking did, 100%. And when he died, I was just devastated. I've talked to you guys about him, I know. I remember, I remember fucking... Like, saying that Mikey uh, answered the phone for me that one day, and then that was it. He just didn't answer the phone ever again after that. For anyone. Everyone's like, have you talked to him? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, fuck, dude. Like, this shit is rough, you guys. Fucking rough. But they raised that kid. You know what I mean? All the... Chris... Chris was a real Mikey. <laughs> Because Mikey has to do all of these things and act a certain fucking way in front of a bunch of fucking people, and his brother just, like, didn't give a fuck. And, like, I loved him for that. It was dope. <sighs> anyway, so those are the three that I'm gonna go visit today, um, after I run these fucking errands here, because I definitely need to... 
I wanted to have a fucking ofrenda for fucking Dia de los Dia de la Huelos the Little Mores Metuertos. <laughs> Dia de los Muertos. Thank you. Fucking uh I wanted to fucking have a fucking ofrenda, but all my pictures are in at my house in LA. <laughs> Um, and I really just need to get all the pictures that mean something to me. Because you know who else crossed my fucking mind who doesn't live out here? Uh, my friend Antoinette. And Antoinette was crushed in a fucked up way and died in a fucking fucked up way. Actually, I may have never posted those videos. My ex was like using evidence against me. <laughs> And I just like would record videos just to get it out of my system and then delete them. So I don't know actually if you know about any of my fucking friends or my ideas to fucking make an friend of. But I have a, a <coughs> what seems to be an endless list of friends who have passed away. And I just miss them all so much. I wish I would have fucking posted that one and kept it, but I deleted it and like that was it. Once they're deleted, they're gone forever. So that's a thing. Um, and, and it was just definitely all of the losses I've had in my life with my friends were fucking tragic, but Antoinette's was especially tragic because if you have ever met, go bitch, I'm going to let you go, you're fine, um, if you had ever met a person that was just nice, like just a nice, kind person, like funny, super sweet, super thoughtful, all of these things, like that was my girl Antoinette. Uh, she came to my middle school in fifth grade. She came to my middle school in fifth grade. Yeah, bitch, get off your phone and learn how to fucking walk. Thank you. Shit, learn how to cross the fucking street. People can't even put their fucking phones down for five fucking seconds. Anywho. Um, so, Antoinette was just a great person. And I loved her very much. She came in eighth grade. in like, the middle of eighth grade. Um, and she came from, like, a Catholic school. <laughs> or a Christian school. A private school. Um, and then she came to join us at Bernard. <laughs> where we were a bunch of corrupt-ass motherfuckers, let me tell you. Like, 110 percent. I'm gonna park backwards. Oh, actually, there's a parking right there. Never mind. I don't need to do all that work. Look at that. Rolling on in. Whee! Yeah. Okay, anyways. Um, so, fucking... Hold on. So, when Antoinette came to our school, uh, I immediately befriended her because I've always been super outgoing. <coughs> and her and I just started kicking it super tough. <coughs> introduced her to like some of my friends but like her and I just kind of bonded and it was just her and I for a really long time and then <coughs> I like did some shady shit like I basically told her business to one of my friends and was like here don't tell anyone and then I told her that I told them and I'm like so if it gets out you know then we know and she's like I fucking told you not to tell anyone and then you tell them and if it does get out it's because you told them not because they said something and I was like oh fuck because I'm an idiot right this sort of thinking, um, and then we, like, kind of stopped hanging around, then she started fucking with, like, these other bitches that I hella didn't like, and I was like, mm, you go have fun with that, but she was, like, she was still my friend, and we still hung out, and for ninth grade, for our ninth grade orientation, we actually went together, we went together, my ninth grade picture in the yearbook, she did my hair, her and her mom did my hair for that, <laughs> um, and, um, and I'm thankful for that time that I got to spend with her. Because she really was just a good person, dude. Um, and, uh, and she died. Her and her friends were drinking out. They lived out in the fucking sticks up in Grass Valley. Um, and her and her friends were drinking and driving an ATV. Apparently they went down this hill they were going too fast, the ATV lost control, they fucking spun out, everyone, like, was ejected from the fucking vehicle, she was ejected from it, and fucking, like, was thrown, like, up against this wall, and then fucking a wall or a rock or some shit 
And then she ended up um, getting pinned by the ATV. And so she was, like, crushed in half. And then those people that she was with, like, they dipped to, to, I guess, go get help or something. But they left her by herself. And then one of them went back and stayed with her until, like, the cops came. And then they, like, flew her out. And I think... I think she made it to the hospital, but I think she died while she was there. And that's fucked up. That was fucked up. <clears throat> because, uh, my friend didn't deserve to go out like that. She left behind, like, a ten-year-old daughter, and, like, she had just, she, she had just gotten married. Oh, my poor fucking friend. She had gotten married, and then, um, and then her husband, like, died in his sleep, like, randomly. And then, like, a year later, she died. Or she was killed. She was fucking killed. And, like, it was just really fucking sad. It was some fucking sad shit for sure, you guys. Like, I don't know. But I was thinking about her because one of our mutual friends, Daniel. So, the day of orientation, you get, for high school, you get divided up by, like, your last name, right? So, it was me and this dude, Daniel, and me because we have the last, same last name and I remember him that day and we we're talking about they were because they were trying to like break the ice and shit right and you're like so what's your favorite movie and everything and he was like oh I fucking love the Goonies he was like hey you guys right and I'm like yes I just watched that with my stepdad for the first time ever right like for the first time I, dude I didn't grow up watching the Goonies no I didn't grow up watching The Goonies. I literally watched The Goonies when I was in, like, fifth grade with my stepdad. And I just thought that movie was so great because I always felt like such a fucking outcast my whole life. Like, it was good. <laughs> it was a good one. Um, so when he fucking said that, and it was fucking high school, I was like, oh, I know what you're talking about. That's dope. And he was just a super fucking funny kid. He was, like, a real cute kid, too. Um, and then I remember after orientation we went back and like then we we're gonna go take our fucking pictures for the yearbook and i met up with antoinette and we were just like walking around getting our pictures taken and shit like i don't know and like just saying hi to people that we knew and everything and <sighs> i have never met a girl whose mother was so in love with her daughter like not in a bad creepy way but like i remember antoinette would be getting ready and, like, her mom would just be right there, and, like, she'd be, like, brushing her hair, and she'd be, like, doing her fucking nails, and all of these things, like, helping her, like, look her best. Like, I remember she was, like, painting her toes before she, like, put her sandals on. Like, I, she was, and, like, and she, she, like, loved her mom. And, like, gosh, you guys. I am very privileged to have known the people that I have known in my life. On that note, I'm going to run into Sally's <laughs> because I'm an emotional wreck. Why? Because I can feel it is like the transitioning. It's the saw when things are changing. Like it's time to let go of the things that have been <sighs> killing us inside and let it fall off with the fuck or let it fall off the tree. And we will have new growth, even if we're bare for a while, even if we're naked and fucking, like, struggling, you know what I'm saying? Like, we will grow new leaves. There will be new growth. Things will get better. And my ex has been just playing this fucking mind game with me, and it's just fucking with me. And fuck you, Dyer, you stupid piece of shit. I fucking hate you. <laughs> like, he fucking texted me... Because I was texting him, like, hey, make sure, like, I shouldn't have to tell you this, but I'm going to anyways because I know who you are. I'm like, make sure you give the kids a fucking shower tonight and wash their fucking hair because they got shit in it, <laughs> right? Like, I was crazy hair day yesterday, so Ava was half fucking purple or half pink and half green. Killian was half green and half blue. And I'm like, yeah, dude, like... Make sure you do that. And then he texted me back with some bullshit. Like, I got the verdict in and fucking, I need to know where you're fucking moving and all of these things. And we need to coordinate the schedules and shit. And I'm like, what? So, 
I hit on my fucking lawyer, and she's like, I've heard nothing. She's like, I'll let you know when I fucking hear something, and I'm like, great, thanks. And, like, they're not going to send it to my attorney, and or to his attorney for, like, they send it out at the same time. So, like, he's just playing fucking games. And then I was like, hey, do they have costumes, or I need to bring them? Because today is costume day at fucking school, and, like, they participated in every fucking day, um, so I need to know, right? And he was just like, that doesn't answer the question. He was just like, we need to coordinate our schedules. Are you staying here or are you fucking going home with your boyfriend? And I was like, first of all, first of all, sir, he's not my boyfriend. He's my fiance. And secondly, we have lawyers to talk about this shit. So we don't have to. Ta-da! <laughs> like, that's how you fucking wanted it. Let them deal with it and let them fucking talk about it. And he didn't say shit. And I'm just like, yeah, fuck you. Because he's just a little fucking whiny bitch. <laughs> And that's just a sad fact. So here we go. Hold on, folks. Okay. So we have made the trip to Sally's. Bam. Dope. Got it for Stella. Um, and you know what's hella dope? You know when you're a witch <laughs> and you vibe with other witches? Ooh, hand sanitizer for sure. Um, so um, I go in there and this chick is like, hey, can I help you cast your fucking young girl fun stretched ears fucking... Uh, little like colored strips at the bottom and shit. I'm like, oh, she's dope, all right. And I'm like, yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> and I'm like, and here's what it's for. Oh, let me if I can plug you guys in really quick. Okay. I was just like, uh, I was like, yeah. Uh, I was like, this is what I need. She took me over, and I'm like, I'm buying this for my mom. I don't really fucking know all these things. And then uh, it was just like, okay, well. Um, you have a number all these things i don't know it was just like it, she was just fun and then she was like dude i really like your bag and i'm like dope dude thanks and then i was telling her where i got it from and she's like oh i think i've seen the brand and i'm like yeah they do like a bunch of because it's by um love paint and stitches and by michelle preen or some shit. Fuck, i can never remember her name dude for reals like my brain just blocks it out every time um but anyways fucking uh but anyways, fucking, so I told her the brand and she like that. Oh, this guy has a little fucking purse here. It looks like, just like Raymond's. Cute. Um, but, uh, tell her about my fucking bag and shit. And then, uh, I'm like, dude, you just made my whole day thing. And she's like, oh, and I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, and she's humble and she's cute. I'm like, that's cute. And then, uh, no, you're fine. You're fine, buddy. It's good. You're totally fine. You're crossing the street. It's not a big deal. Um, and so then... Uh, then I look at her fucking shirt and it's a fucking tarot card shirt. It's like the moon and the under the lovers or some shit. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, dude, dig your shirt. It's a good one. And she's like, oh, thanks. And I'm like, right on. I'm like, good job, witch sister. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's such a vibe, folks. And it's not just that it's a vibe and it's a trendy thing. It's like, we have like a spiritual awakening for women who realize that the power just resides within themselves. <laughs> realistically that's all that being a witch is about my friend knowing that you have the magic within you to make things fucking happen and that is what's up i need to pop my fucking jaw god damn it Ugh. anyways so now i'm off to go drop this shit off at my fucking aunt's house then i'm gonna be off to the cemetery just to go make my way should be a very fucking exciting time <sighs> i've never brought anyone with me on my errands before so welcome you guys fucking welcome and it's funny because um oh because remember uh, did i tell you yesterday i mean oh did i tell you yesterday i don't even think i told you guys yesterday because i was trying to make a recording or a video right and it stopped me at like fucking like five minutes then it stopped me again and it said i had like seven minutes left after i like deleted some things and i was like i'm obviously just gonna have to delete hella fucking shit here so i did um i had like fucking over like 232 fucking text messages i fucking had um like over fucking 8,000 pictures on my fucking shit uh, I had a bunch of fucking apps that I'm like, I tried to like minimalize my apps, right? I'm like, well, what do I really fucking need? And what am I really fucking using? And like, what should I allow to take up space on my fucking device here, right? <laughs> and the answer was not a lot, my friend. I got my fucking banking apps. I got my fucking, my banking and my cash apps. I got my fucking shopping fucking apps that I fucking use. I got my social medias. 
two of which are not even fucking active right now. I haven't had a Twitter account in over fucking like a year and a half. Haven't had a fucking Instagram account in two fucking weeks now. But you know, when I talk about the growth and the change and everything, like I'm slowly but surely getting over it, right? Because essentially I can go look at all my fucking, um, and all my fucking pictures and like hopefully find these videos of me fucking like scaring Raymond. Oh, I'm not fucking gonna do that. Ooh. Yep, nope. 100% no, folks. That's how people die. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not running through that. It started fucking going when I fucking... Uh, oh, there's Eddie Munster. It started fucking going when I... Uh, when I was about to cross, and I'm like, nope! Even fucking felt my brakes tighten up there. I don't know how fast this fucking train is coming and all of these things. I don't need to die today for nothing. Remember when you're younger and you like count the fucking train cars? I don't even know if I could do it anymore. <laughs> it's just so fast. <laughs> it's actually giving me a headache looking at it right now. So I will just stop doing that. And it's still going. But yeah. Sorry, and I'm trying to have thought here. Oh yeah, and my cousin Bree came over and she left her little water bottle. Yeah! So I'm gonna be dropping that off to her too. Oh, there's a tree right next to me and it's windy because of the fucking breeze. Oh shit, because of the fucking breeze. And it's like just letting off all sorts of fucking leaves and it's just beautiful. <laughs> it is just beautiful. But yeah, so my ex has been fucking with me and it's been really fucking with my shit. And I haven't heard from my fucking attorney because she's like, well, I'm in court, but I'll check, you know, when I fucking can. And I trust her enough to be like, if she would have had the verdict, she would have let me know immediately. So I think he's just fucking playing games, trying to upset me, which he does obviously doing because he knows that I overthink and overanalyze everything. And it's like, fuck day, or can't you get a fucking life? <laughs> just fucking leave me alone and stop the manipulation of the mind games. Because honestly, at this point, for what? <laughs> For fucking what? Am I gonna stay in the Bay Area if I lose this case? Absolutely. Why? Because my fucking kids cannot be raised by your fucking ridiculous fucking... Ridiculous, unstable ass for sure. You don't even fucking take care of them. Your fucking mom does, so fuck off. <laughs> but yeah, so it's just been a thing. Um, and just like a whole bunch of mental exhaustion. But I did get some fucking homework done last night. I, oh, and I gotta fucking finish that shit today. I did my fucking Westlaw paralegal, or my Westlaw Edge paralegal certification. Um, and then I have to do my regular Westlaw because they're like, even if you've already done it, which I did, like, why don't you just do it and get a refresher? And I'm like, you know what? I could probably do that actually because I know how to get to secondary sources and I know how to do key sites. And uh, basically, so okay, so basically Westlaw is what all attorneys have access to. You know? if they pay for it. <laughs> um, and they have access to all of the journals, fucking cases, case law, fucking statutes, fucking <sighs> circuits, jurisdictions, all of these fucking things. Um, and um, it's where we go to do our research, right? It's where we go to look up information that is going to help us with the case and all of these things. Because basically a paralegal is an attorney that doesn't go represent their client before court and argue their case. But they basically get everything ready that leads up to the argument for that case. So, um, so yeah. So that's, that is the thing. Sorry, I don't know why this person's going so fucking slow in front of me, but it's really driving me fucking nuts. There's one thing I can't fucking stand. It is ridiculous drivers. Like, don't drive under the speed limit. Don't fucking be on my ass in the fast lane when I'm already going 20 miles over the speed limit. <laughs> like, if we're, if it's, fucking, if it's fucking like 60 and we're going 80, you can go around me, bud, because there's no need to go any fucking faster. And maybe you just need to cool your fucking jets. So there's that. 
Yeah, get the fuck out of my way, please. Thank you. Jesus Christ. Here we go. Hmm. Interesting. Um, but anyways, so yeah. My tonight isn't inconsistent, or my day today is inconsistent. Going to the cemeteries, saying what's up, going to, um, going to one, I think I have fucking steak in my house. Sorry, I have like a leftover piece of like super rare steak that's, if I like put it in the microwave to warm it up or put it on a thing, it's gonna be like medium rare. <laughs> so that's great. Um, and my kids like their meat rare so I'm very happy about that because the other day Ava and Killian both had some steakums and I was like yeah I was like now we can put it in a tortilla and we can put cheese and sour cream on it and guess what that is it's a motherfucking taco ladies and gentlemen so we'll see if they're down for that because maybe it's just like a getting older thing maybe they're getting older and they're just like yeah this is what I want to do I want to eat meat. It's like, yeah. <sighs> Do that. Eat all the shrimp, eat all the meats. Alright, let me go drop this off real quick. Hold the fuck on. Hold the fuck on, folks. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Went ahead and dropped that off. Now we're on our way. Okay. That's there. Uh, okay. Oh, here we go. It's so funny. I like grew up in this neighborhood and I like look at these houses and I'm like, how the fuck are they a million dollars? <laughs> Seriously. Like all of these fucking houses over here are a million dollars. Like it's crazy. Like it's just crazy to me. And there's kumquat trees everywhere actually around this neighborhood. Oh, and my fucking ex has a persimmon fucking tree in their backyard. And I'm like, hey, can I get some persimmons? And I'm like, we chopped it down. They're like, we chopped it down. I'm like, of course you guys did, you fucking ridiculous ass humans. <laughs> but I do love me some persimmons this time of year. And I do love me some kumquats. My fucking girlfriend, uh, Sarah, when I had my housewarming party and we had all of our fucking like all of our fucking fruits and shit like that. She like brought over like branches of a kumquat tree. She's like, I think it'll just give it like a really rustic look. And I'm like, bitch, I fucking love you. And I'm like, and it will. And someone legit complimented that and was like, I really like how you have like, you know, the little fucking like leaves and shit around here. And I'm like, yeah, fucking Sarah, all good. Love her, fucking love her. She's one of my favorites actually. I'm very thankful to have her in my life for sure. And I wish that like, I wish she would have just been treated better as a person in life. Because she's had apparently some super shitty ass friends. And I'm just like, how the fuck could you be this way to her, right? Like, Sarah is not a bad person. Sarah is a really good person. Like, loving, kind, thoughtful, fucking real. Like, I see her. And I see her progress. And I'm just like, I'm just very proud of her. Um... And it really does kill me to see fucking others do shit, you know what I mean, to upset her. Ugh. Goddamn fucking potholes. Um, so that, that's a thing. It's nice to have, like, a girlfriend in your life that you can, like, confide in, you know what I'm saying? Because, I don't know. I guess I had my other friend, but she's just not the same. <laughs> it's the same. It's not the same kind of vibe or energy from them, that's for sure. Oh, speaking of vibe and energy, guess what I'm not doing? Hold on. So, I don't know if I told you guys or not already, but I was uh, looking at, or talking to people about <coughs> my guest list, <coughs> right? <coughs> and who wants to come to the wedding? <coughs> because why? <coughs> Because, 
because um, <coughs> I really have like maybe 20 people for sure that I would like to invite. I'm like, pretty much that's it, right? Um, and <coughs> I remember when I like put out my dress post, I'm like, if you want to come to my big day, let me know. And like a handful of people that I didn't think would want to be there, like want to be there. And I'm like, yeah. So essentially it's like, okay, for the day of the wedding, like my friend Daniel said that he wanted to be there. And I'm like, dude, you can hella come to my wedding. Like, honestly, like, I, like, I would love to have you there. Because Antoinette looked at him like a brother. I knew, I've always known he's been a solid-ass dude. He stands up for, like, women's rights and shit. He's, like, not, like, an ignorant, an, an, an ignorant motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, um, he... He was talking about, like, how more women need to be in politics, right? And all of these toxic, masculine, fucking Mexican dudes are on there. Like, oh, yeah, so what? They can fucking teach us how to cook and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, obviously these boys are fucking not fucking up on the fucking, you know, oh, shit. Are not up on, uh, what is the fucking word? Are not up on current events in the world. Because guess what? New Zealand's prime minister is a fucking woman, you idiots. Like... God, um, I'm like, and they're doing a fucking excellent job fucking running the country. Fucking Angela Merkel is the fucking chancellor of fucking Germany. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. People are just fucking stupid. Um, and it's fucking sad. So anyways, um, so anyways, where was I going with this? People are stupid. Mm hmm can't remember. I got distracted and I apologize by the fucking lane merging into one lane and me having to rush over before I fucking hit the cones in front of me. But yeah. Um. Oh yeah. Daniel being a solid dude. So yeah. And like, he's just like, there you go. Like he's, he's a good guy and I would like him to be there. Um, but anyways, so there's just a bunch of people that I'm like thinking about inviting. And then there's per a bunch of people that I for sure for sure I'm not inviting to my wedding. No invites. No one fucking tell them where it's going to be. If they fucking show up, I will have them removed. 100%. Actually, you can't even get to my fucking wedding if you don't have an invitation. I will hire one of my fucking old security guard friends and be like, hey, just check the fucking invitations. Like, that's all I need you to do. And if they try to walk in without one, then no. I might even give my fucking guest wristbands and a fucking stamp. I'm going to fucking do that. Yeah. Yeah. When you get to our wedding, once you are in there, we're going to give you a fucking personalized stamp that says like, um, like VIP for uh, for fucking wedding or some shit, right? VIP guest or for some fucking shit. Like, uh, I'm here to see them say I do. You can do a bunch of shit with stamps, but like, that'll be dope. That way we can know who's going to be there and all these things. And you can just flash your fucking stamp because I do not want my fucking bitch ass sisters being there at all. No. Nah. Nah. Ugh. Like, no, I'm not doing that. I don't care if they're clean and sober. I don't care if we're on good terms. No. Why? Because they will ruin it. They will ruin my fucking day because they are hateful, jealous, petty ass hoes, and I truly want nothing to do with them. <laughs> and so, they will not be attending my wedding. Who else will not be attending my wedding? Mm, yeah, as for now, oh yeah, Jessica and my ex. My fucking raise ex and my ex. Definitely not invited to our wedding. Thank you. Oh, you see me over here, buddy? Okay, good. Um, definitely not invited to my fucking wedding. Because, no. <laughs> because fucking no. Um, obviously they wouldn't be invited, but you know how people like to do crazy shit and show up and, like, ruin people's lives and all these things. And how, like, you'll be seeing fucking on, like, world star hip-hop, like, bitches in, like, their fucking bridal fucking dresses, like, fighting some other bitch or some shit like no not at my fucking wedding my wedding is gonna be a day of peace i'm not even gonna be stressed out on my wedding day you know how people get all stressed out and about uh, 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 can i go around you because you're not fucking moving oh yes move up bitch thank you uh um I don't want it to be a day like that. I want everything to be planned as it should be. I want to make sure I hire reliable people because I'm going to need to hire a makeup and a hair person. Although I might really just put on like <laughs> some chapstick 
and call it a day. Or some blue lipstick. I don't know actually what I'm going to be doing with my makeup. We're going to have to be doing and trying some looks out for sure. Um, but what I do know, what I do fucking know is that um, I just want everything to be perfect and everything down to a T. Yes, right? That sounds so cliche because everyone wants their wedding to be perfect. But like realistically, like I'm not fucking with anything less than the best on my wedding. <laughs> Straight the fuck up. I'm gonna be a paralegal for at least a year. I'll have a nice amount of chunk, chump change to fucking, you know, get all the things that I want. Cause I really, hmm, I really want a fucking tiara. Can I love you guys? Does that work better? Yeah. Cause you guys are actually guys on the Um, yeah, I kind of really want a fucking tiara, but my friend Sarah convinced me that the fucking, like, the small hat with the veil is just the look for me. And I'm like, you're right. <laughs> Always wanted that my whole fucking entire life. It's definitely happening on my wedding day, for sure. And I think I might even have like hints of fucking teal or sea foam in there. I don't even, I, I don't even know what color. Three. Three is the number for, uh, three or four. Three or four is the number for um, our wedding, right? Ray wants to have three or four groomsmen and I was like do I have fucking three or four bitch friends I was like fuck Raymond and then he started like listing off his fucking female friends and I'm like yeah but like this is supposed to be like my wedding thing and I'm like okay I'm, I got some hoes for you <laughs> and I'm like and they will be a good time right um so I got my fucking list I got Sarah Shannon fucking Mel and fucking Sophia I got the three s's the m and the k <laughs> so that should be a good time um and I definitely am excited to start the planning process. I was talking to my friend Luis yesterday, and I was like, yeah, so Ray wants to get married with, a, with an ocean view. He's like, sounds expensive already. And I'm like, you're fucking telling me. And I'm like, this fucking guy, I'm like, he's like fucking a princess over here. Pretty, pretty princess Raymond with all of his fucking things that he needs. Seriously, all of his fucking things. Oh, I remembered what I was talking about with fucking, with fucking Chris, how Chris had other plans that day when my fucking ex was being a dickhead. And I was like, come stand next to me. So that fucking day, I, um, we're at, I pull up to the fucking cemetery, right? And where I fucking pulled up at, there's a fucking bench. And on this bench, it says Farias with a heart on one side Farias in the middle and a heart on the other, like on this bench fucking memorial site, right? And honestly, I've never met anyone with the name Farias ever before in my whole fucking entire life. <laughs> in my whole entire life, ever. Fucking no one. And so fucking, I'm like, this is obviously a sign from Chris to say, bitch, skis, he's the one. Dyer is a little bitch ass motherfucker. You don't want him? Go be with him. And so I remember like that day I fucking took a, I took a picture of it, right? And I like hit up Raymond and I was like, babe, I fucking miss you. I'm so sorry. Cause I'm the one who broke up with him, right? Like we were, we were like boyfriend, girlfriend. And then I broke up with him cause I was like, dude, I'm just tired of being depressed. Like it is so fucking bad for my mental health, right? Like so fucking bad. Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, and then fucking like we weren't together for like, like a couple, like two or three weeks. And then I tried dating someone else <laughs> and then, um, and then I go to the funeral and like that, like the, the dude that I was kind of seeing, like he was just really selfish. And like, I just, I was just so willing to date someone that owned their own house <laughs> because of convenience, right? Like I could just move my life in there and it wouldn't be a big deal. Um, and I like wasn't seeing past the red flags. Like you don't start, like red flags, bitch. You wanna hear a bunch of red flags, ladies? I got some red flags for you, ho. If you are dating him and, or if you're, if you got on, got gone out on one date with him and he fucking answers the door and starts kissing you on the first date, like that's kind of a red flag. Like you're getting a little too comfy there, buddy. Like just cause we matched on fucking Tinder, like, what if you had bad breath? What if you had bad teeth? What if like, I don't know, what if there was something and I was like, I'm just not vibing with you. Like, you know how there are just some people who have a smell and you just like, mmm, that smell is just not the smell for me. Yeah, that's happened. Um, so, you know, there could have been a bunch of things. So that was red flag number one. I was like, okay. And then, 
it came down to pet names. Happened real quick. Honey, baby, fucking sweetheart, like shit like that. Also a red flag for me. Um, yeah, I think Ray called me K for hell long. <laughs> Seriously. So that, that, was, that was a red flag. And then I think like after the first week that we were dating, when I like would leave him in the morning, he'd be like, okay, I love you. See you later. And I'm like, mm, love you too. Bye. Like, it was just weird. And then I found out that his ex and him were like best friends, his twins, his twins mom. And that, um, she like went over there and wrote like fucking, what the fuck did she write? Like Amber loves, Amber loves dude, right? Amber loves Alan. And then I was like, so are you fucking her? Like, what's up with that? He's like, she's just my best friend. And like, I'm just trying to keep it cool for the kids. And I'm like, so does that mean you're having sex with her? Like, what does that mean exactly? And he's like, no, he's like, but I am like kind of seeing like this older woman. She's like 45 years old. Um, and you know, we like see each other when she's in town and he's like, so you have to like be okay with that. And I was like, well, how often is she fucking in town? He's like, well, she travels a lot for work, so not often. And I'm just like, you know, I've never been like a person that like shares, right? Like I'm like, I'm not like I was in one threesome my whole entire life. Didn't like it. Wasn't with it. I like, I was the girl in the threesome that felt insecure and was like, okay, this dude is fucking this chick that's way hotter than I am. Like, does he want to be with this chick? Is this what he's interested in? Like, is he really not trying to fuck with me? Like, just a bunch of shit. You know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> so those were things that were definitely thought about and like I just didn't like how it made me feel so I'm like I'm not gonna do a threesome again and I haven't ever since and it's dope because Raymond is not into threesomes like he is not into threesomes him and his ex like were in a th like I don't know doing some shit and like she got pounded out by like two dudes at once and I'm like yeah like is that what you want to see like you want to fuck me while some other dude is fucking me like is that what you want and he's like fuck no and I'm like yeah see like I would never want to see that like I would never want to see you fucking another girl like mm -mm no like so all those people and all those like poly fucking groups and shit like it's it's not for everyone it's for some but it's not for everyone um and so I definitely was like I was good I was way good off of that um and then I still continued to see him and then I was just like you know what like this isn't working for me um and so I dipped and then I was like I, I don't know. I didn't talk to anyone for a couple days, and then Chris's funeral came, and then I wore, like, a super banging ass dress to the funeral because Chris would want it that way, right? Like, he wouldn't want to, um, he wouldn't want me, like, dressed in black like everyone else. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he would want me to be looking beautiful, and I was. So I went, and I, I went dressed like that, fucking thought maybe, like, maybe I could give my ex a chance, right? Maybe this is the thing. It wasn't a thing. He was a dickhead. So then I was like, okay, well, maybe I will just, um, maybe I will just not fuck anyone or do anything for any amount of time. And so I did that too. <laughs> I did that too. And, um, hold on, let me fix my tires here so you can balance. So... Um, so I did that too. And then Chris's funeral came, the Faria second plaque was there, and I was just like, this is just destiny, <laughs> right? Like, that's obviously what it is. So, um, so I fucking stopped. So, what did I do? Oh yeah, so I called Raymond on my drive home and I was like, babe, I love you. I fucking miss you. I got a fucking sign today while I was at my, fucking, my, my friend Chris's funeral. And I just like, I just need to be with you. I'm sorry for fucking like putting you through this. And he was like, Crystal, I fucking love you. Like, I fucking miss you. Like I've been waiting for you, all these things. And then that was it. And then what Chris died in fucking June, July, something like that. I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to check when I go over there. Um, and then Ray ended up moving to the Bay in January. So he moved out there like six months later because he was like, I'm not sure what we're going to do, all these things. He was like, it would just be easier for me to go live where you're at instead of you trying to come out here. Which now that we're going through the court process, obviously he was right, right? 
So obviously he was fucking right. I am thankful that my face matches my neck. Ha! <laughs> uh, but anyways, so... And my eyebrows are natural, got all that natural growth. I actually need to get them fucking done. So let's make an appointment, Crystal. Um, and so anyways... Um, I'm not rolling a big joy, I'm saying he's a crutch. So anyways, fucking, and then he moved out here and everything was great. We got, he moved out here in Jan, end of January, um, rented a room for a month. Then he, um, then we, then we got an apartment together and then he furnished everything in it. And then when it was good and ready to go, um, when it was good and ready to go, then he, uh, I'm sorry, I got distracted by that car. When he was ready to go, or when, yeah, when it was good and ready to go, then we fucking, um, then we moved in together. And the apartment was furnished and everything was beautiful. And I'm thankful that Ray is a doer. When I live with my fucking ex, we had a furniture and boxes for months because he's a lazy fuck and didn't want to assemble anything. So we just had a box with couches ready to be assembled in our apartment living room for months. Um, and Ray literally fucking put together our chest of drawers, our fucking smaller dresser, the fucking, um, his desk, the kids, their fucking beds, their fucking, uh, their beds, the fucking entertainment center, the thing that the TV sits on in the living room, and, um, and I think that was it. Um, all in a matter of, like, two and a half weeks. <laughs> Which is actually a lot of time, but I mean... Um, I still had to, like, pack up my fucking life at my fucking mom's, you know what I'm saying? So, that was also a thing. So, anyways, um, so anyways, sorry, I'm getting all these stems out of here. Yeah, so anyways, I'm thankful that Raymond is a doer. Um, because even when it comes to just shit around the house, like, he'll notice something's wrong with it. He'll be like, oh, hold on. And he'll, like, go get a screwdriver or whatever the fuck he needs and, like, be on it. And I'm like, damn, babe. Like, that is just such a fucking turn on. Like, a man who does things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He could get it for show. Sure. And he will every fucking day of our lives. For the rest of our lives. Forever. And that'll make me real happy. Okay. Is that it? No. So this is cemetery number one. This is where my friend Josh is buried. Um, maybe he's over there. I think he's under the tree though. I don't know. At his funeral, I like don't remember exactly where it was at. I, I know where we were, but I was handing out balloons at the funeral, making sure everyone had one so they could do like the balloon fucking float away thing which I am so anti you guys it is just so fucking bad for the environment and people do it and it's just like you can't tell them how to grieve so I was there for that um, oh my gosh how did that even happen okay there we are ah here we go um so yeah So yeah, that was definitely um, an interesting day. I fucking had like grown ass man cry in my arms and like my friend Isaiah, I felt so bad for him. He was like, dude, Josh was my first friend. And I'm like, what? And he was like, yeah. And then he like told me the story about him and shit. And I just like, my heart just ached for him, dude. Seriously. Like, I don't know what I would do if I lost my best friend. I haven't seen him in like over a decade, but we still pick up where we left off when I do see him. And that's what's important, folks. Like, 
we all have lives, you know what I'm saying? We all have things that we're doing um, to better our lives, to go on adventures, all of these things. We can't always hang out with the people from our past, and that's fine, you know what I'm saying? Um, but it's nice to keep up and to be in contact. Like, my friend Two Court, um, when she passed away, her, so Two Court's story is she was, um, she was dating, she was dating or married this fucking woman, and he, I'm sorry, Two Court is a, was a man. Um, I'm respecting her wishes. Um, a transgender dude. And, um, he had it really rough growing up. Didn't have a mom. Grew up with a fucking dad that didn't care about him. Like, j just fucking had it really hard. And I, f I felt really bad for him. Um, but I was also a dickhead and a bitch. And after me, like, because I would always, like, poke fun, right, and talk shit. And one day, he was just like, I'm tired of you fucking talking shit skis, fuck you! And blocked me. Didn't talk to Two Court probably for, like, seven years. Fuck, probably for, like, ten years, actually. Fucking, and then I move back to the Bay Area. My ex and I go to, um, go to the Folsom Street Fair together. And we run into, we run into him. And I'm like, oh, fuck, dude. I'm like, Mel, like, what a do? I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I just got this face, and it's like, it was okay. And I was like, I missed you. Like, I really missed you. She's like, what's up, skis? I was like, or he was like, what's up, skis? And I was just like, damn, dude, like, it's really nice to see you, you know? And then I was like, how are you? She's like, oh, you know, just, like, being sad, being depressed, fucking wanting to kill myself. But, you know, it's all good. And I heard her, and I was like, hmm. I was like, okay, like, well, we'll talk about that later, right? Like, I had seen people that I hadn't seen in forever. I had a very selfish moment. And my ex, he actually caught on. Because my ex has been a suicidal person his whole life. And he was like, wait, I remember him being like, wait, what? Like, what are you talking about? I'm like, he, he like, took, he took her, he took him over to the corner. And, like, they kind of had a conversation. And I was just like, I, I, I saw that. And I appreciated him for reaching out to her. Or I appreciated him for reaching out to him. And, um... And it was one of those, like... Uh... It was one of those, like... My wife got diagnosed with cancer, and then she died, and then she left me. And I'm here all alone by myself. And, like... After Pride, I... We were like, oh, let's hang out all these things. And, like, she would post online all the time, like, I'm fucking sad. Can someone come pick me up? Can we hang out all these things? And, like, I didn't have a car at the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just impossible for me to get out to Pacifica um, without spending a million dollars. You know what I mean? And she was fucking, like, I was like, oh, I'm looking for a job. And she was like, oh, fucking, um, you can come work with me, skis. It'll be all good. It'll be, like, a good time. He was like, it'll be all good. It'll be a good time. And I'm like, dude, I'm fucking down. Like, hit me up. You know what I mean? And then when we ended the fucking instant message, like, I normally tell my friends I love them, and I didn't tell him I love him, and I, like, I live with that. And so I try to tell my friends all the time, they're like, I love you. Because they have to know. You know what I mean? Because who knows if you're ever going to talk to them again. And then I never talked to him again. And that was our last message. And, like, a week later, um, he was, like, found in the bathtub... You know what I mean? Like, found in the bathtub. Um, they say it was an accident. But I mean, how do you accidentally drown when you're suicidal? So, that one really hurt, actually. <laughs> because, um... <laughs> And she was reaching out for help. <laughs> she was reaching out for help and like... We just weren't there for her. We just weren't there for her. Um, and after she died... 
<laughs> then after she died, she fucking um. My friends and I, we were like, we have to talk about this. Like, we have to talk about this. Um. And we all had a meetup. I got a fucking sun on my shirt. We all had a fucking meetup. Um, see, stop. We all had a meetup um, at Kennedy's. Like, all of his friends. And we're like, everyone was kind of chatting at first. Um, and they were all kind of just like hanging out, like, you know, reminiscing and shit, you know? Like, everyone was reminiscing. Everyone was just kind of like talking and shit. And I'm like, uh, we were all playing pool. And I'm like, all right, you guys, like, I can't remember if I was the one, or if it was someone else, but someone went up there and was like, we all have to talk and we all have to come together right now. So everyone stopped what they were doing, I'm like, well, let's talk about why we're here. Um, we're here because we failed our friend. <laughs> She was reaching out and she was saying how sad she was. <laughs> how sad she was and how like she just needed to be around people and all these things. And no one was no one was there. And I was like, do you see how fast we all came together and like stopped what we were fucking doing and like made time? I'm like, we need to do this in the future. If any of our fucking friends are going through any fucking things and we can see the fucking red flags, like, we have to be there for them. Like, we can't let this continue. Like, we've lost so many. <laughs> like, you think about fucking Darren too, fucking Sean, like, fucking Dina. <laughs> fucking Scuba. Fucking scuba. Fucking Johnny Frisco. Fucking all of these people. Like, we have to be there for our friends, right? Like, we have to let them know they have a reason to live. They can't just fucking. They can't just fucking end their lives. Like, they can't just feel like they have nothing to live for and just drink themselves to death. <laughs> Like, fuck you guys. <sighs> it's so hard. Like, I feel like, fuck, was this, like, Josh's fucking death wish, too? Like, obviously you fire at the fucking cops. Like, what do you expect? You know what I'm saying? Like, fucking idiot. Gosh, like, senseless. You fucking knew you fucking stole a car? Like, deal with it. Deal with the consequences. Like, fuck you guys. I'm so tired of losing my friends. <sighs> Fuck. I've lost more friends than I have family members. <laughs> it's just so fucking sad for me. And it's just so fucking sad for me. <sighs> Raymond's calling. I'm gonna call him fucking back. I'm gonna take my fucking joint right now. Ugh. We're gonna go find my fucking friend's fucking plot. Go smoke a fucking joint with him. I'm pretty sure he's under this fucking tree right here. Maybe under that tree. And then I'm gonna sign off. Then I'm gonna spend some time with my friend and listen to some fucking... R&B music so he can fucking oh there he is okay well thanks for hanging out with me guys I'm gonna spend some time with my friend now um life is short 
don't be a fucking dickhead or a fucking cunt. And realize that when you're gone, your family is going to be left behind missing you. And you know, it's dope. Look, the rest of the grass is like kind of wet right now. But because fucking of like where this hits, it's not that wet. Take care of yourselves and each other, folks. Fucking A.